This presentation is on wastewater use in aquaculture, specifically growing fish in wastewater-fed fish ponds. Aquaculture means water farming, just as agriculture means field farming, and so we're talking about the farming of aquatic organisms such as fish, but also mollusks, crustaceans and plants. However, in developing countries, especially in Asia, aquaculture is most commonly the production of freshwater fish that are quite low in the food chain, for example tilapia and carp. Aquaculture occurs in all parts of the world, and this slide shows salmon farming in cages in a seawater loch on the west coast of Scotland. But it's wastewater-fed fish culture in developing countries that we're going to consider in this presentation. And this is very important, as most people in Southeast Asia, the most densely populated part of the developing world, get most of their animal protein from fish grown in wastewater or excrete of fertilised fish ponds. So in terms of global food production, this process is hugely important. We're going to look at the design of a wastewater-fed fish pond system, and our design aim is the minimal treatment of the wastewater with maximal production of microbiologically safe fish. The 2006 WHO guidelines for wastewater use in aquaculture are concerned with the eggs of trematode worms, in particular schistosome eggs, and those of Clonorchis sinensis, the oriental liver fluke, and Fasciolopsis busci, the giant intestinal fluke, and also with faecal bacteria. Now there's massive asexual multiplication of the trematodes in their first, or only, aquatic host, which is a freshwater snail. So the guideline quality has to be zero viable eggs per litre of treated wastewater. And to prevent the transmission of bacterial infections, there should be no more than a thousand E. coli per hundred mil of the water in the fish pond. The design procedure we use is as follows. First we design an anaerobic pond and a secondary facultative pond in the normal way and we then calculate the concentrations of total nitrogen and ammonia nitrogen in the facultative pond effluent. For these calculations we use Reed's equation and the Parnum and Middlebrook's equation, and details of these and all the other equations are given in the design summary document for this presentation. Next we design the fish pond, which receives all the facultative pond effluent, and the design criterion we use is a total nitrogen loading of 4 kilos per hectare per day. If there's too much nitrogen, then there's a correspondingly high concentration of algal biomass and therefore risks of deoxygenation at night, and thus fish kills. And if there's too little nitrogen, then we get low fish yields. So the fish pond area in square metres is given by 10 times the concentration of total nitrogen in the facultative pond effluent, which is the fish pond influent in milligrams per litre, times the flow in cubic metres per day, divided by 4, the total nitrogen loading in kilos per hectare per day. We then calculate the retention time in the fish pond, taking net evaporation into account, and then we determine the E. coli count in the fish pond, and this must be no more than a thousand per hundred mil. Next we calculate the concentration of ammonia nitrogen in the fish pond, using the Parnum and Middlebrook's equation, and then finally we determine the percentage of this that is free ammonia, i.e. dissolved NH3 gas, so that we can then calculate the concentration of free ammonia in the fish pond, and this has to be no more than 0.5 milligrams nitrogen per litre in order to avoid any toxicity to the fish. This slide shows some of the wastewater-fed fish ponds in Calcutta in India. All of the city's wastewater, some 550,000 cubic metres per day, is used to feed around 3,000 hectares of fish ponds, and these produce just under 20% of the fish consumed in the city. The fish they grow are mainly three species of Indian major carp, with some tilapia as well. The slide shows the fish being harvested. This is normally done at around 5 o'clock in the morning to get the fish to the markets early in the day. The ponds are stocked with fingerlings, which weigh around 20 grams, at a density of about 3 per square metre. And in three months these grow to 150 to 250 grams. Not a large size, but they are sold at a price that the poor can afford. Allowing for a 25% loss, due to poaching, death and consumption by fish-eating birds, the yield per harvest is just over 4 tonnes per hectare. With three harvests per year, the yield is about 13 tonnes per hectare per year, although usually it will be closer to 10 tonnes per hectare per year. The actual average yield in the Calcutta ponds is 4 to 5 tonnes per hectare per year overall, but the better managed fish ponds produce 8 to 9 tonnes per hectare per year. GIFT stands for Genetically Improved Farm Tilapia, and the GIFT strain of tilapia, 
which was developed by very careful selective breeding of wild and farmed strains, grows about 75% faster than non-gift strains, so it really has to be the future of wastewater-fed aquaculture, although, somewhat curiously, very little work has yet been done on growing the gift strain in wastewater-fed fish ponds. Integrated agriculture and aquaculture is also clearly important, as the wastewater is used twice, first in aquaculture, and then secondly using the fish pond effluent for crop irrigation. In Calcutta, for example, the fish pond effluents are used to irrigate rice paddies, and in China, the integration of aquaculture and agriculture has been practiced for over 4,000 years.